Right there, hold on. No, right there. Just stay. You ready, pup? What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're having a pretty good day. And uh, I just wanna, you know, say thanks for spending a few minutes of it here with me. So, you guys are probably wondering why, you know, we're in what we're in. And if you haven't guessed what we're in yet, um, if you haven't seen the other video, because I did introduce this into a video the other day when we were doing the second part of the Volkswagen Beetle bed truck stuff. Uh, but we got a new project slash daily mostly slash, uh, you know, shop vehicle. And uh, yeah, obviously because we're in a little, little tiny cabin here, we're in a truck. So I have never actually owned a truck before. Uh, I had a Chevy Blazer a few years back that I was using as a daily. Uh, that I got for like 1200 bucks while I was working on the Integra. I think it was during the uh, impound time or B20 VTEC era, that, you know, that length back on the channel. Um, but yeah, so if, as you guys have been regular watches of the channel, I've been doing the shop stuff for like seven, eight months now. And uh, just in general, like being a car guy, you need to be able to go get stuff, whether that be, you know, bigger car parts or, you know, engines, you, you, you gotta do stuff. And a truck has always been something that I've wanted to get at some point. Um, now, I know a lot of you guys are probably also into the truck stuff as well. This, again, my first one, I didn't, I had a very, very tight budget. I don't know nothing about trucks. I've only driven a handful of them. The one that you see me in every now and again on the channel when I'm going to get material and such, uh, that's my dad's truck that I uh, went in with my brother and we bought him for like a Father's Day thing. It's an older Dodge Ram. And it's, you know, it's, it's a beefer. Uh, you know, it takes, for me, it takes 40, 50 bucks in gas just to go get, um, material to do my welding stuff like my uh, my metal uh, so that was an issue you know it's just it's a bit it's a full-size truck with you know the long bed all that so it is a pig to move that thing around like a Home Depot parking lot or uh, something like that so I wanted to get something much smaller so what I am in right now what I can finally call my own is a 1996 Ford Ranger and uh, on the lesser side it is a 2.34 cylinder but it is a five-speed manual and uh, the reason I went with that is because A, it was in my budget. It's in really good shape with low miles, especially for the year. Um, this thing actually only has about 114, 116,000 miles. There's a little bit of recent odometer issues because the speed sensor is bad. I'm waiting on the new part to show up. So uh, the old guy drove it for about a month that I bought it from and he got it from the original owner on there. So going off the Carfax and everything, it is original up until 111. Um, so right now we're at like 114, but yeah, this thing is freaking cherry, dude. So like the five speed I wanted because again, I don't, you know, I just don't like working on stuff. Like I like building cars. I don't like maintaining things. <laughs> yeah, I do what I have to, but I don't like going out of my way to do it. So in the event that I got an older manual like this or an older automatic, you know, I didn't want a Chevy. I know the 4L60s have issues. My brother has a Chevy Colorado for his work truck, his detailing truck. One morning he came out, he had five neutrals and you know, it happens and I don't know why. I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a truck guy. I'm not a Chevy guy really. I don't have anything against it. I just know that those are their, you know, their little quirks. So I wanted an, uh, a manual because I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, automatic transmission issues, you know, sensors, uh, when, if the fluid has ever been serviced, you know, little things like that. Me, I like manuals. I'm not hauling anything heavy. This truck doesn't have the power to haul anything heavy. So I didn't need an automatic to make that job easier. So for me, the manual, you know, have a little bit engagement with the vehicle, you know, save a couple miles a gallon, maybe if I'm granny shifting it and, uh, mostly just simplicity of if I throw it, if, and when I change the clutch, you know, it's just a clutch. They're, they're cheap. They're easy. That's it, plain and simple. And also, now I got something that the old girl can ride with me in, huh? So right now, me and my dog Sophie are on our way to uh, go hike a little bit because you know, I didn't go to the gym this morning. Uh, yesterday, I wasn't feeling it very well as well. And the day before that, I set a, a few PRs for myself. So I was pretty hyped on that. But yeah, today I missed the gym this morning. I'm gonna go tonight. Um, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go on a hike and you know get some leg day in before my leg day. So that's why I got her with me because she can kind of fit in the S2000, but I mean, you guys know an S2000 is a pretty small cab. She's kind of a big girl. Um, so we don't like her being in there and, you know, being uncomfortable. So now we got the truck and she can ride in here just fine. 
Um, yeah, it's been awesome though. This thing has been nothing but good. I've had it for about a week on the dot now. I've been daily driving it every day. Got it registered like second day I got it. Uh, got the insurance and everything put on. It's cheap. Like I just, I love it. I already ordered a bunch of parts for this thing because it needed a bit of maintenance. And um, yeah, I'll kind of just go over that here in a minute. But overall this thing, for what I paid for it, I paid $4,000 on the dot, like just cash. Uh, the guy was asking 4,500. I know the value of these things on the market right now is, you know, a little higher. Um, when I was going to look at this thing, there was only one other truck that I had missed the opportunity on, which was a Toyota T100, which I really wanted a Toyota, but I slipped on that one. I just slept on it. I was uncertain and I missed the opportunity. And then everything else was, you know, for this price range, 4,000 and under was twice the mileage, half the condition, half the quality absolute nuggets and I just didn't want to deal with it so the only other one I was considering was uh, again half the mile or no twice the miles uh, a few hundred bucks cheaper it did have an equipment rack already but I'm just you know I'm just gonna get the Harbor Freight one like it's on the my dad's truck that we put on because it's cheaper for me to just get that one than uh, you know to build one just because of material costs right now but they work so good like they're efficient they're cheap they're easy to assemble and take out if you need to and yeah, eventually, you know, I'll get that. That's another 300 bucks later, but I think it was worth it to spend 500 bucks more on the overall quality of the truck than to get an absolute rat's nest of one with twice the mileage, just to get a couple steel tubes on the top to make it a little bit easier for now. You know, I got some ratchet straps behind the seat. I'll just tie them in the bed until I get a little bit of extra money. Not a big deal to me. I do gotta say though, this thing is dog slow. No offense, Sophie, but this thing is like, I mean, I know it's a truck and I know at that Rate. it's you know a 2.3 liter four-cylinder Ford and it's not meant to you know go fast but holy crap I drove the s2000 for the first time last night after doing a brake flush prepping it for the track and after not driving that for a week and then you know having been in this that s2000 felt like I was absolutely on the ground dragging my butt and that I was a rocket ship like I can't express how slow this thing is and I'm thinking partially it being related to it needing a tune-up because I only drove a Ford Ranger once before when I worked in Napa fresh out of high school and that thing was you know that was 10 years ago I don't remember how that will no, that was seven years ago but I don't remember how slow it was it was a manual because that's how I learned how to float gears you know but uh yeah no this thing's other than being you know slow it's just a good cruiser it gets good gas mileage I mean I put 30 bucks in it the other day and I've been riding on it for basically the whole week can't do that in the S since the S takes premium you know it just doesn't get as good a gas mileage it's hard to stay out of VTEC in a car like that it's just fun you know this one you're kind of forced to just go slow you're just chilling you're just doing your thing and I uh, I appreciate that about it so of course with that lower price tag on the market since we all know that the truck market in general small truck normal truck whatever truck that since you know Bovid started it's just been pretty crazy and uh, you know with this price tag I got it with yeah it's pretty low miles like I said, 114,000 to 96, like it still has this little quirk. So of course being a truck, uh, I actually, this was registered as a fleet truck for a while. So that explains because on the rear bumper, I already took the stickers off, but there was stickers on there that said, stay back 50 feet. I got a couple little tiny holes in the plastic up here by the seatbelt where I, I believe wires were ran for maybe like a magnetic light to go on top. And then uh, based off of the, the history of it, like the maintenance history, there's a a good chunk of it so um, because of that though because being a fleet truck work truck you know truck in general and the lower price it's not in the best condition body wise it has its dings it has its dents but overall I think for the four grand this thing's in pretty mint shape the interior you know one or two cigarette burns on the driver's seat a little bit of a stain here in the middle from some coffee and the armrest being you know an armrest is gonna be a little worn out and uh, mind you this is the XLT so this is the extra luxurious truck I believe is what that stands for and yeah it's all it's all cloth that's not very luxury I'm sure it was back in 96 in uh, you know Ford's eyes but it does the job um, but yeah so the interior is in really good shape could be a little bit better but overall way better than anything else that was on the market when I was looking at this thing and then uh, the body it's got its dings its dents you know it's got that classic Arizona patina on the hood and the roof but nonetheless it's in pretty good shape but it does need a little bit of maintenance now I already went out and I, uh, because the tires that were on here were, you know, from 2012 and they were the, on the stock wheels, which is fine. But to me, it just looked a little not so truckish with the wheels being so sucked in and it was not safe driving on those tires because they were 10 years old and extremely dry rotted. So I drove on them for like three days and I hit up offer up 
and uh, one of the first things I found is some 15 on four and a half, which I learned truck wheel specs are a lot more strange, you know, reading about than they are car wheel specs. Because essentially, from what I understand, a 15 on four and a half is basically a, you know, or a five, five on four and a half, excuse me, is essentially the same thing as a five by one 14.3. So, like my S2000 wheel specs. I don't know, it's, it's weird, but I found these wheels. I think they came off of a Jeep. Some guy was buying them, trying to put them on some sort of lifted Subaru. He got some nice all terrain tires on them, never got to put them on didn't have the right you know adapters so they sat and then I got them for basically the cost of the tires which was like 500 bucks so I already did my first mod which was wheels and tires and it's a bit lower of an offset so they sit pretty flush with the uh, the body of the truck and I think they look awesome just a nice little touch I'm about an inch taller on the wheel size and the tire size I want to say is a little bit taller too so I think I'm roughly about an inch and a half lifted per se right now and uh, I like it it's pretty cool um, and then you know it, it needs some maintenance I noticed driving down the freeway I get a kind of a very random it's only done it three times now like a ghost misfire slight like hiccup buck type thing um, and then I noticed it kind of does a very slight misfire here and there nothing crazy but you know I got some plugs on the way I got some wires on the way I got a fuel filter on the way because the guy did say it sat for a while before he bought it the guy that I bought it from so I got a fuel filter I put in some sea foam into the gas tank um, and since I've been driving it and then you know I got some shocks for the front because the front driver's side it looks like it's sagging a little bit like you know it's a little tired so I got a shock and a speed sensor because like right now my speedo's kind of working I'm doing second gear low second gear because we're at the canyon right now and uh, it says we're doing 40 but we're probably doing about 20 so you know that's better than what it was it's been sitting on 15 miles an hour since I bought it um, for the last week so that's an improvement but I guess, I mean, you know, it's to be expected. And I like to do all the basic maintenance, whether it's been done or not, mostly because I just don't trust people. And uh, unless I have it in my hand with the paperwork signed and dated, then I don't believe that it was done. So that's why I'm just doing it myself. And you know, look at how happy she looks. Like she, she knows, she knows we're going for a walk, huh? Yeah, we're going for a little hike. Get all excited, old girl, little girl. I don't want to say old yet. She's like seven and a half, but to me that's old. She's got some gray on her face now. Um, but yeah, so I don't want to drag the video out, you know, too crazy long. I just wanted to, you know, share this new truck uh, slash daily slash, you know, maybe a slight project. I mean, we'll do some maintenance to it. I don't think we're going to get crazy with any sort of like build stuff. I'm just, I need to, you know, be able to keep it simple, keep it fun. Might do a slight lift later. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm super proud of myself for being able to, you know, save up the money to be able to buy something like this. And uh, it's just, it's a really good feeling. Like I thought about maybe trying to finance something a little bit nicer, but you know, I think this is a perfect starting point for me. Again, because my situation, uh, you know, it's still trying to grow, blah, 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 blah. It's simple. I didn't want to start with like a full size anyway. Like that's just too much money. And that's just, you know, too much uh, effort for me right now. And I, I'm, I'm pretty hyped on this, not gonna lie. Like I'm loving it. It's, it's slow, but to me it looks cool. And you know, it's just so easy and fun to drive. And yeah, I, uh, I hope you guys dig the video. And if you guys, you know, if you got a Ranger, then let me know. I mean, yeah, anyways, guys, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to, uh, you know, check out my new work truck and Sophie's mouth, apparently, in the corner of your view. But uh, thanks for hanging out with me. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hopefully by now you've considered subscribing. If you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon. I do have a uh, big cartel where you can get my metal stuff and my uh, merch and such. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go and we're going to go enjoy this walk. And we'll see you guys in the next one where you uh, get some maintenance and stuff done in this thing. So do what you love. Forget about the rest. Sophie, move your head. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Now I'm trying my first, well, technically second because I just did this a few minutes ago on a different one. Off-road type, you know, climbing stuff, trail thing. And this is, uh, I'll, I'll get out and show you guys once we're done, but I'm trying to put this little two-wheel drive to work. <laughs> and uh, I don't know nothing about the tire pressure for this stuff. I just got, you know, 35 PSI in these puppies. But we're getting it. We're getting it done. All right, so <laughs> we, uh, we made it. So we came all the way from the road. The road's way down. Well, you can see the trucks moving over there, but yeah, no. I know it's not nothing crazy by any means, but this is definitely my first experience. So trying to, you know, figure out maneuver a pass. I've been, you know, doing this kind of stuff before with friends. Uh, but yeah, no, this is pretty fun. I mean, I definitely see now why you would obviously need four wheel drive and, you know, maybe air out a little bit. So, I mean, these all terrain tires, I think they're doing a pretty good job. They're gripping just fine. I'm not slipping. It's just, 
it is a bouncy ride, but yeah, no, I'm having some fun doing this stuff. So I'm gonna kind of hang out for a little bit and I finish my hike with the old girl over there and yeah, get out of here. So anyways, now, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.